And I guess we're back from the perspective of Shiro. Because, uh... We just had, like, a conversation with Archer, I guess, and the whole dream sequence. And when you think about it, it's kind of thematic. Because, uh, when we were Shiro in the Fate Route, we had these sort of dreams with Saber, which looked into her past. And I guess Rin also had these sorts of dreams as well. And it's like, you know, both of these, I guess, servants had their own share of problems, I guess, you know. Uh, Saber being, well, Artoria, the, uh, the king. And Archer being um, some sort of guardian of humanity, I guess. It's kind of le it left, it's left a little vague. It's not very specific, you know. Especially because in in the dream sequence, there's no one, no, there's no real names mentioned. You know, it, it just refers to him as he. Well, at least, well, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure uh, the dream was referring to Archer, because uh, that was what Rin like pretty much said. You know, it's implied very heavily so yeah it's not all sunshine and rainbows for these uh, heroic spirits and anyway I wake up I feel heavy like there's lead inside my head well, that's a sign of fatigue Shiro is it because I have lots to think about or because I'm seeing strange dreams you know, but it's also because, well, Shiro, like, he doesn't sleep, like, very long, you know? It always seems like he, um, you know, he makes dinner, and then he, he trains with Saber, and then he goes to the shed to do more training, and then he goes to sleep, you know? Often he even sleeps in the shed, but actually, he doesn't sleep for very long, and he wakes up early in the morning as well. You gotta, you gotta have a... Gotta have uh, at least, what was it, I think it's nine hours or eight hours of sleep. Especially when you're like a teenager, right? So, you're not getting enough sleep, Shiro. Even though I usually don't see dreams, I think I've been seeing something like a dream recently. Oh, dream? I thought, well, we were from Rin's perspective when we had that dream with Archer, right? I assume. Maybe he's having a different dream, a dream we didn't actually see ourselves. I see images of swords in my dreams. Okay, so I don't think, yeah, I don't think we were told about this. Shiro was having uh, dreams of archer's swords instead. In them, his short swords come up pretty often. Sword and VA. I curse the persons that's not here and get up from my futon. It's before 6 in the morning. Yeah, he wakes up like 6 in the morning. It's pretty early. I can't be affected by strange dreams. I have to go and make breakfast. I mean, assuming, because often I think he's described that he sleeps at like midnight. You know, at least he tries to sleep at midnight. I don't know if he's like, you know, for most people, you don't just like collapse right away. Then again, he does a lot of training, right? So maybe he is tired enough to sleep right away. But otherwise, he only gets like six hours of sleep at most. It's not a lot. It's not a lot for a growing boy. Saber sees me off as I leave the house. I'm getting used to this lifestyle as the morning passes by smoothly. Yeah, same as always. I don't see Tosaka at the gate. Since the only suspect we had, Issei, turned out to be innocent. Well, I mean, he has something to do with it, but, well... If you learn too much, you end up dying, Shiro. I bet she's busy running around gathering information. But how will I do that? I guess Tosaka is investigating the people at school, so I'll go. Uh, I guess, so I guess I'll investigate the building. I gotta interrogate people, find evidence, click on stuff. You know, like a uh, typical like I don't know, like Phoenix Wright game or a Robo game. You know, you gotta find all the items and put them together, reach a conclusion. Well, life's not convenient enough to let me notice anything I haven't noticed before. 
I searched the school using all the breaks I had and the first half of lunch break, but I wasn't able to find anything strange. Mm. What's up, Issei? Do you, are you, I don't know, I don't know if he's mad about it. He's probably not mad about it, but maybe even more embarrassed, really, that we uh, basically stripped him in this very room. You know, you don't feel awkward about that, Issei? He must be done eating already as he greets me while reading an old poetry book. Thank you. Meshkukara I leave the laughing Issei to himself, pour some water into my cup, and sit down at the table. I clap my hands together and open my lunchbox. At the same time, someone knocks on the door. Issei slowly goes to the door. Kuzuki Sensei. The visitor is uh, Kuzuki Sensei, the one in charge of the student council. I see Kuzuki Sensei a lot here, but I bet it's Emiya, or rather, I bet it's Emiya is in the student council room a lot from his point of view. Oh, from his point of view, yeah, I was a little bit confused when I started the sentence. I silently eat my chicken sprinkled lunch. There must not be anything important today as Issei and Kuzuki sensei are just chatting. Nom. Nom nom. Sensei, it's time for a while. Hmm. I'm sorry. 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 Kuzuki Sensei leaves and Issei comes back in a good mood. Wow, I just saw something rare. It's really rare to see Kuzuki Sensei chatting about meaningless, uh, meaningless things with a student. And with that shy Issei. Oh, well, they might get along since they're both stubborn, but it's still strange. Hmm. What do you mean by stubborn? I guess. I don't know. They're the type of people to not do small talk with just random strangers? I don't know. Nah, he's here. Hmm? What's that, Emiya? I was thinking about it before, but you and Kuzuki are in the same way. Oh, he's surprised. I don't want to answer it, but I don't want to answer it. I don't want to answer it. Ah, it's different. そういえばエミヤには言ってなかったな。時がついてね。仲がいいのは当然なのだ。何しろ鈴木先生は俺の兄貴分みたいなものだからな。はあ。A そう一郎。鈴木先生は3年ほど前からうちに居候をしているんだ。見ての通り僕と綱人柄だが、裏表のない誠実な心をしている。同じ屋根の下で暮らしていて、人間として尊敬できるのだ。兄として慕うのは当
you know, are you gonna stab me again, Issei? Are you gonna like your eyes gonna turn red and stab me? Or maybe that, maybe you telling me that doesn't activate the weird like artificial command spell. I don't know. So, yeah, mention like being lovers and all that. Again, before you stab me. I don't know why you're not stabbing me. Now again, maybe it's a very specific circumstance that would cause him to, you know, be controlled by a caster. So maybe now he isn't doing it, maybe? A second shock. <laughs> I try my hardest to object with a dizzy head. Issei stops the conversation as if he as if saying he's angry. Anyways, this is something I can't ignore. Kuzuki Soichiro is coming from the Ryudo Temple, and there's a woman that's said to be at the Ryudo Temple. I hear Kuzuki Sensei's fiance showed up about a month ago. If that's Caster, all our answers are right there. Hmm. I guess we're safe. Again, I wonder why did he stab me? Because maybe if I, if, if Shiro asks about it, like specifically, then maybe we get stabbed? Or is it maybe, I don't know, maybe Caster is just not paying attention right now and didn't activate the command seal? I don't know. Who knows? Maybe it's just all convoluted, or maybe I'm just missing something. In the classroom after school, we don't even have 10 more minutes until we have to go home, but I tell Tosuka about Kuzuki Sensei. Yeah, it's not the case with, Sh with Shinji. Shinji, I mean, he, he technically isn't a Magus, but he has the knowledge of a Magus. He's from the Mato family line. But Kuzuki, does he from a family like family mages? It doesn't seem Rin knows, so... I don't know if she's listening to me, as Tosuka is frowning to herself. Oh, he's in the Magus, but he has to be a master? Make up your mind, Rin. Well, I'm starting to get used to this. But I still can't keep up with Tosuka's thought process. Hmm. Ambush. It's another ambush. First we ambush uh, Hercules, you know, in the forest. Now we're ambushing uh, Zoichiro, I guess. Pull the strings so I have to stay the night shift. Can you do that, Rin? Apparently you, she can. ちょっと待て。いくらなんでもそれはなし。空席を夜間で学校に来る保証はないもの。機会は待ったなし。夜まで学校に残らせて帰り道であいつがマスターかどうか試すのよ。念のため聞くが、マスターかどうか試すってど
Is that how it works? I mean, guess, yeah, I remember the Gander shots that she fired. Isn't supposed, isn't it supposed to do um, physical damage? It's supposed to just simply make you, like, sick, you know? あ、わからないわね。それならよけいこつごじゃないの。一体何が危ないっていうのよ、エミヤ君は。あ、わしはあいつは、あいつは、あいつは、あいつは、あいつは、あいつは、あいつは、あいつは、あいつは、あいつは
That must mean we'll be attacking Kuzuki Sensei about an hour after we meet. Yeah, she probably learned it with uh, her last master. I think we learned that in the Fate Route. That she was, well, participating in the last Holy Grail War. The one that took place, actually, here. We'll have to fight if Kuzuki turns out to be a master. Caster is a wary servant. She would never give us another chance at a surprise attack if she found out her master had been attacked. Then we'll have to make sure to beat him if they're going to attack. I can't let my enemy escape, nor can I run away. No matter who it may be, Caster's master has to be defeated to stop Caster, the one attacking all the people in this town. Caster's master. I don't know, it always feels weird saying that Caster's master, because it's like a, it's like a rhyme. If all goes well, it will take away his command spell and he won't be a master anymore. But in the worst case, we'll have to try to kill each other. A weapon at my place, something I can easily put magical energy into, would be a wooden sword, a boken. My success rate of the strengthening magic has been pretty good recently, so even a wooden sword will become a good weapon. Yeah, it's always been the fact that he always keeps failing his strengthening magic before this whole shebang started. Now he just does it very easily for some reason. Well, that's only the case in of uh, that's only in the case of normal battles. I'll need a better weapon if I'm to fight against a master or a servant. Hmm, swords like his. I imagine what I saw in my dream. Twin swords of black and white. If they're about that long, I should be able to use them. And most of all, I could fight decently if I had those swords. I'd be able, uh, I'd be able to protect myself, not be a burden on Saber, and be proud that I'm Saber's master. You just you know why they want just go up just go up to Archer and say, hey, can I borrow your swords for a minute? My shoulders slump as I head to the porch. I'll just do what I can. For now, I'll concentrate on making dinner. Saber always seems so serious, but it seems Saber is looking forward to the meals. It's been my recent secret joy to make her happy. Eat dinner and then we go ambush Kuzuki Sensei, I guess. It's 7 o'clock. Tosaka comes right on time. I show her the wooden sword bag. There is one wooden sword in here. This is about all the preparation I can do. Hmm, you know, yeah, he's, he, like Shiro, wasn't he getting used to using two, like two swords and all that? But now he only has one. Oh yeah, you know, in fact, yeah, Shiro's kind of useless at the moment. He only has like a wooden sword, that's all he has. He's just gonna stand there gripping his sword. Mm. Well, I can't think of a situation where I'll be helping out Saber. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah again, I, I think I mentioned this before, but it's interesting that... Uh, you know, he's saying this line. I know in the last route, or route, or route, uh, he always, he always like trying to put himself in front of Saber, you know, the, to like not let her get hurt. But now he's saying, well, I actually, I can't help her because she's like super strong and I can't do anything. So it's interesting that um, that whole ordeal isn't in Shiro's mind anymore. Rin, why not then, Saber asks with a serious expression. Mm, he isn't here? Why is that? Tosuka starts walking. I don't know what she's thinking, but I guess we won't be able to, uh, we won't be getting Archer's help. You know, in fact, yeah, if we did get Archer's help, he might just shoot at Saber again.
Oh, uh, you guess just because in this world he's falling for Rin and not for Saber? <laughs> Maybe so. Time passes. One has to pass this intersection if one is to go from the school to the Ryudo Temple. It's already been an hour since we got here. A boundary field has been created here. Boundary field, I guess, uh, made by Rin. And it's soundproof, apparently. Similar to the boundary field, yeah, similar to the boundary field she activated when she fought us in that classroom. According to Tosaka, it's so quiet around us. I guess it's because Tosaka's boundary field is working, but the town is too lifeless. It's already been seven days since the Holy Grail War started. It's been a week. It seems the town is having its spirit slowly drain without anyone noticing. Uh, we need a 2D fighting game of fate? Something like Melty Blood? Well, yeah, that'd be cool. I, though I think there is a fighting game. I don't think it's 2D, but I think it's like, you know, like it has 3D models, you know, and all that. I forgot what it's called, but there was, yeah, there was like a fighting game for the Fate series. Speci uh, specifically the Fate Stay Night series. I move to the wall. I can't even hear footsteps. I see a shadow under the street light. A tall and lean figure. The familiar figure is definitely that of Kuzuki Soichiro. Yeah, it's called uh, Fate Unlimited Codes. Hmm. It's stiff. It's like it's good, but it's stiff. Hmm. Might check that out eventually. Kusuki Sensei passes us with his usual ordered steps. He's too defenseless. I'm suddenly attacked by the feeling that Kusuki Sensei might be innocent. It seems Tosaka is in doubt as well. I guess she's still going with the plan as she points her index finger at Kuzuki Sensei. Gander. It's a curse to reduce the target's physical ability, considered to be the simplest magic. Tosaka's Gander shot is more like a gunshot, but I'm sure she'll go easy this time. She's not gonna shoot it like a machine gun, like us, or like at us. She murmurs. I'll still make it. There is a possibility that Kuzuki Soichiro is innocent. Isn't there another way to check if he's a master or not? Ah! Another way to check if he's a master or not. Well, we just go up and uh, take off his clothes. <laughs> I mean, that is an option, right? That's how we checked Issei. I mean, I mean, hmm. We either let Rin do her stuff. I guess, you know, he's just a normal person. He'll just like, ugh, and then he falls down and he faints and he'll have a cold for two days. Or we stop her and then do something else. I don't know what we're going to do as Shiro. Why not? Let's see what happens. It's, it sounds like a horrible idea. Let's do it. Stop, Tosaka. We can't do this. This method is too violent. Ah, uh, well, she's gonna do it anyway. I thought we, yeah, I thought we were gonna like, like, stop her and then go out and say, "Hi, what's up, Kuzuki Sensei? Uh, Kuzuki Sensei, can you just like take off your shirt?" No, yeah, no. A black shot is released with an ear ringing sound. Well, isn't it supposed to be soundproof? I don't know why it's ear ringing. She must have made a sound on purpose. Oh, okay. It is slow and the black haze goes for Kuzuki like a pitcher's change up. Yeah, so she did it intentionally actually. It's, it's not like she's uh she didn't like make it soundproof. A wind of disease that will cause him to be sick in bed for two days. But two days of inaction is fatal for a master. There has to be some kind of reaction if Kuzuki sensei is a master. Tosuka jumps. Kuzuki does not react at all. Tosuka's Gander shot mercilessly hits Kuzuki Sochiro's head. Headshot. But right before that, it is nullified by a rope that suddenly appears in the sky. Hmm. 
the man that was supposed to get hit by the Gender shot, looks at us. As if saying he knew we were here all along. I quickly take the wooden sword out of my bag and put magical energy into it. There's no time to be screwing up the strengthening magic. And there she is. The robe that appeared in front of Kuzuki now takes form. Be <clears throat> Excuse me. Female limbs appear from the bluish purple robe. Teleportation. A complete teleportation is considered to be a sorcery even in this modern world. Caster has easily performed such a thing to appear in front of us. Yeah, it's kind of like it's kind of like hacks, you know, because usually we we need to use a command seal to like teleport our servants, but Caster can just teleport anywhere she wants. Mm, they're having a conversation. She must not think nothing of us as she calmly talks to her master, Kuzuki. So I guess it's confirmed. Running away would be hard now. Now if Castor and her master are here, all we have to do is fight them, even if this is in the middle of the town. But before that... Tosuka grumbles from her hiding spot. Castor must hear it. Since she says so and points her hand in our direction. I, I assume her Gander Shaw is probably much more deadly. I recall what happened at the Ryudo Temple. She won't hold back. Knowing her, I bet she would destroy this whole area along with the wall we're hiding behind. I sense her nodding behind me. But there's something I need to confirm before that. I don't wait for her reply. I go out into the intersection with my wooden sword. What are you doing, Shiro? Tosaka must not want uh, want to let me go alone as she comes out as well. There goes our ambush. We just we just stand out in the open. I thought we well, I mean we technically already did the surprise attack, but I thought maybe Rin would do like a second one. Maybe. I guess not. Shiro kind of ruined that. As Caster watches up with uh watches up with uh, blah, blah, blah. Caster watches us with composure. Kuzuki is standing next to her. We're about ten meters apart. No matter how I think about it, Caster's finger would be much faster than me running into them. But I showed myself in spite of that. I have to do something before I fight. That is <laughs> Fate, eh? To check the true identity of Ko Kuzuki Soichiro, the one caster is protecting. He says so in his usual manner. He is very calm. I don't feel presence as a magus from Kuzuki Sensei. No, I don't even feel his desire to win the Holy Grail War. Then. Uh, what a weird question I ask. If he is, he probably won't be able to answer that. If he is controlled, I don't know. It's possible that Kuzuki Sensei is controlled by Caster, like Archer said. I can't fight against Kuzuki Sensei until I get this cleared up. Yeah, the fact that he might be a puppet or something like that. Caster emits an intent to kill. 
That alone tells me the question is off limits for her. The words are not a threat, but. Uzuki sensei stops her in his usual manner. My throat is dry. It must be Caster's intent to kill. The robe figure tells me I'll be killed if I say something bad. I bear it and. I say so while glaring at Caster. キャスターが魔力を吸い上げ続ける限り、いずれ死んじまう人間だって出てくるだろう。そいつは町の人間は生贄だって言った。取り返しのつかないことになるのは、そう先のことじゃない。なるほど、そういうことか。通常善良な人
キャスターが何を企もうと知らぬ私はただ私を阻む者を殺すだけだ、hmm. Self defense As interesting actually the way he's saying all of this It's kind of like very similar to what Shiro is kind of like right He doesn't really care about the Holy Grail war and he only tries to attack those who are attacking him Though they probably have different values you know Shiro doesn't want innocence to be involved but Sochiro doesn't just he just doesn't really care he doesn't care about the strangers He just doesn't want anything to do with it really Caster is standing in front of us with an expression of victory. Yeah, I guess negotiations have failed. Kosuka complains, but she doesn't move. No, she cannot move. In terms of skills as a magi, we have no chance of beating Caster. Masters are magi, so we cannot match an excellent magus like Caster. Oh, Saber. I hear a voice from behind me. Before I can turn around, the servant of the sword, Saber, charges forward. Oh, he just said that he wasn't gonna, like, be involved, but I guess Saber is going to attack him. Even my voice won't catch up to her. Saber is already armed and charges at Kuzuki like the wind. Caster confronts Saber with her casting. She uses 5 verses for her spell. If Saber is a wind for charging 10 meters in a flash, Caster is a lightning for finishing her spell even faster. It's a raging thunder at that. She shoots off 5 bullets of light in another second, and the bullets pierce Saber like fatal thorns. Yeah, I mean, Saber, we know, we know this from her last battle of Caster, but she's like, she has magic resistance A, so... Like, she's basically very OP against uh, anything like magic related. Caster screams. Even Archer had to evade Caster's spell, but Saber is nullifying it just by glaring at it. Just stare at the bullets, and they, they die. Saber is not looking at Caster. Her target, the one she has to slash, is Caster's master, Kuzuki Soichiro. Saber slashes Kuzuki without hesitation. Soichiro. Sama. Sama? You know, it's a very, uh, it's a very, like, uh, I don't know what you call it, but like a very deferent, is that the right word? Deferent, honorific to use, you know, you, you would only use it for people you really respect, you know, or people like, for example, like masters, well, like, masters not in the sense of magic, but like masters like in real life, like a master, like a teacher, or something like that. Well, not like a teacher, but like, uh, I don't know how you say it, not like a school teacher, but like a teacher... In the sense of someone you very you admire very much or something like that? I don't know. Anyway. The intercession becomes silent again. Saber stops after slashing her sword. Everyone here thinks the battle is over due to their incredible speed. Oh. If we kill the master, then the servant is gone, right? I don't know well I don't know how Saber feels about that. I don't know why she went against Kuzuki and not cast her herself. He did say he wouldn't like be involved if no one attacked him, but Saber attacked him. Yes. Everyone except Kuzuki Soichiro, who is standing there calmly. Nani? Interlude. It's just, just, there's just an interlude. Also, the status screen updated? What's that? Is it because of Caster? Yeah, yeah. Kuzuki Soichiro. We learned, I guess we learned her master. We didn't know that before. In the Fate Route. We didn't really meet him, actually, in the Fate Realm, so... Charge, stop, slash. Having repelled all of Caster's spells, Saber settled the match without giving anybody a chance to stop her. The charging speed, her footwork, and her attack were perfect. Her invisible sword slashed the enemy master. A surprise attack at the perfect moment. Saber's powerful slash splits Kuzugi Soichiro in two. Well, no, I should have split, uh, split him in two. 
bewilderment causes her to gasp. What's going on? Saber, still in the posture of having swung the sword, stares at the enemy in front of her with blank amazement. Bakana. Bakana. Even Saber does not understand what's going on. A perfect strike that was slashed horizontally. The attack is stopped. The sword has stopped before slashing the enemy's body, being caught between something. Can such a miracle occur? A sword has been stopped by her enemy, Kuzuki Zoichiro. Knee and elbow. Her sword has been stopped, caught between his elbow and knee. Saber does not know, of course, that there is a technique to stop an enemy's blade with bare hands, that there are experts today who actually use it. I mean, I guess so. You only see that in Hollywood, but I, I, don't, well, I don't know. Is it like a real thing, you know, the idea of stopping a sword with your hands? You, you always see it like, you know, uh, like in media. That's like a trope. But still, she would not have stood there in astonishment if this was a normal fight. But this is a battle of a servant, yeah. I mean, yeah, Saber is like much more powerful than a normal human being. Even a Magus, he's like, he's not supposed to be a Magus, right? He said it himself. And yet, he stopped her sword. An invisible one, even. And the enemy is a mere human. For him to stop an invisible sword with his bare body, he must be insane. His voice is deep, as if coming down from the ground. Saber's body moves. She tries to pull back her sword with all her might. At that instant... Ani! An unknown impact strikes her head from the back. She does not understand at all. It is her first time fighting a man that can stop a sword barehanded. Then could this be an attack with his bare hands? She was punched? The back of her head was hit from such close range? She evades it, still not knowing what it is. Something goes past her temple. Saber understands it is a fist strengthened by some magic as she jumps. Oh, strengthened, you say? Hmm. Similar to maybe uh, Shiro's strengthening magic? Yeah, I wonder, can he strengthen his own, like, his own body? His own fists, you know? Can you do that? As she has a long weapon, she is at a disadvantage at close range against an unarmed opponent. Saber retreats to short range, the range where she can make use of her sword. Of course, she keeps facing her enemy while she does so. She's moving to get out of the range advantages, or she's moving to get out of the range advantageous to her enemy. It is an established rule to pursue a retreating enemy, but the enemy does not pursue her. Caster's master, the man who will be defeated if he stays there, does not move, and he pierces her through her solar plexus. Solar plexus, yeah, that's uh, I think that's around the stomach area. You know, it's actually a very like vulnerable organ. Actually, if you actually get you know punched there, for example, you do uh, like lose your breath. You know, if you were breathing while you were punched, it can be very uh, it can be be very stunning. You know, if you aren't prepared to get hit in the stomach, <laughs> she breathes out. She only feels the impact. The attack is stopped by her armor, and only the impact comes to her. How is he doing all this? I mean, he's a regular human, right? He shouldn't have access to magic. But then again, who do we know has access to powerful magics? Probably, you know, the person right next to him. The impacts continue. The things aim accurately at her vital points are human fists. Wow. Did she even have time to gasp? By the time she realizes that his mountain-like fingers are the cause of the impact, the match has already been decided. Wow, well, that's a lot of that's a lot of punching. I assume punching. Well, he said like fingers, so maybe he's more like you know, like more like palm strikes, you know, and more like you know finger strikes maybe. The fist is 
The fist. The fist is the fist. The fist is the Oh no, sometimes I can't say words that has like S T S. Fists. The fists. The fists shower down on her. The man's fists are fired in rapid succession with heaviness and intensity as if they were made of iron. How should it be expressed? His arms are flexible like a whip, but they move in right angles. If his arms are shot out like a flash, his forearms that move from there are like the technique of a fierce god. Hmm. Flexible like a whip, you say? Reminds me of like um, a certain type of jab that you do in boxing. I forgot what it's called. So you put it like you put it low to your body, but then you snap it as you as you punch. I think there's a certain type of jab that you do in boxing that's it's very similar to that. I guess what he's doing. The idea is that you're supposed to like, since you're putting it down um, near the lower body, and then you snap it to the to the to the top. It's kind of like deceptive in the sense that you can't tell how long your arm is as you punch, right? That's the idea. The almost invisible attacks are all attacking her in her weak spots. He allows no counterattack. Even her arms are targeted, and the pain reaches her core even through her armor. Well, maybe, you know, blunt damage is effective against plate armor, hmm? That's how it usually is in a lot of RPGs. Uh, the attacks are all come from the outside to the inside. The swinging arms change direction using the elbow as the fulcrum, and they beat Saber from impossible directions. Hmm. They are sharp and dull. It's not an instant kill, but they contain poison that will lead to death. That is all that is contained in these attacks. Even though the fists cannot be avoided, they aren't that heavy. But uh, the pain numbs her mind every time she receives a blow. Taking that small opening, the fist goes back, uh, goes for the back of the, her head like a deaf scythe. She avoids it uh, instinctively. Attacks going for her arms and body are fine, but the head, the back of the head, would prove fatal for her. Well, I guess it is. I mean, I was wondering, like, is a servant's body the same as, like, a human body? Are all the organs intact? You know, she is technically made out of, like, like magic stuff, right? Was it, but is her physical makeup the same way as, like, a human? Maybe. I mean, probably, I guess. Therefore, Saber concentrates on that one attack. A monster that can stop a sword with his bare hands. Facing these strange attacks that she's experiencing for the first time, the only thing she, she trusts are her own instincts. The enemy's arms stop moving. His stance is like his arms, steady like a rock. And again... And again... It is surprising, like why is a, just a normal human being able to beat us, like... Like beat up Saber, you know. Saber's like the strongest servant in this Holy Grail War. It turns out, Ko Toichiro Kuzuki is the strongest one. And I was wondering. Let's see. That doesn't show here. I thought she has something to do with like instincts, skills. Yeah, instinct. Instinct A. I guess it's explained here. Even though she doesn't know what's going on, and she, she can just like uh, dodge stuff with her sixth sense. That's, that's what uh, that's what he's referring to right now. The man moves. What is different about uh, what is different about the attack? Saber, who was avoiding all the fatal blows, could not dodge his attack. Oh, couldn't dodge this one apparently. Her mind fades. The impact landing on the back of her head shakes her brain. But she still manages to raise her hands. The man's attacks cannot penetrate through her armor. Then the man will go for her bared head. You know that's why you gotta wear a helmet. You know I don't know. In a lot of anime and video games and I guess shows and movies, y'all you often see the characters, despite wearing like full plate armor, they don't wear a helmet, which defeats the whole purpose of having you know full protection. You're supposed to wear a helmet. <laughs> you know. I think in, uh, I think I believe in Goblin Slayer, the recent like anime and manga, they actually uh, 
refer, refer to that. The fact that you should be wearing a helmet, you know? That's the point. That's the point of wearing armor. You're just protecting everything, you know? Anyway. Saber raises her arms to protect her face. The impact comes through the arms. It is like a snake crawling through a thick forest. The enemy's fists easily makes their way through. Her mind fades away. The body of the snake, his left elbow, smashes into her collarbone. Saber avoids it by retreating a bit and grips her sword. The course of the fist after that. She readies herself for the, for the blow that will go for the back of her head from the left side. She cannot make light of him anymore. If the enemy is to take her consciousness, she will let him. But she will cut down his arms as compensation. She opens her eyes wide and... And she is astonished at the change. Lenny. With the elbow as the fulcrum, the blow comes straight down from above. The circular orbit of his attacks changed into a straight line. He instantly moves her neck to avoid a blow going for her head. Oh, but it still hits her. Apparently. The impact lands on her shoulder. Okay. She glares at her enemy with her left shoulder destroyed, and her spine freezes up the instant she does so. The man moves back half of his body. His right hand has not been used yet. The fist that has been set at the height of her throat is released like a cannon. Pew! Unlike the previous attacks that followed the line, this attack is executed as a point. A thrusting fist aimed at the person in front of her. Uh, in front of him. With his force and precise accuracy, he should be able to pierce through her. With his charged attack, it should be easy to pierce Saber's throat, break her bone and smash her head to pieces. Wow. But it misses. A surprise attack is useless on her, as she has instincts bordering on pre uh, precognition. Well, that's OPs. A snake-like fist grazes past her neck. Hmm. I guess the way he's attacking is very similar to like... Well, I don't know. I don't know much about martial arts, but like... I assume it's like a snake-style martial art, you know? A lot of like... A lot of like palm strikes and... Like uh, finger strikes, you know? I don't know how effective a finger strike would be. I'd imagine it will break your fingers if you attack someone like that, but I guess, I don't know. Seeing that, she tries to step into attack, but at that moment... BAM! Wow. An unbelievable sound comes from right beside her neck. No. Oh. The snake's fang pierces her. The instant it is dodged, the attack that passes her uses its fingers to dig into her neck with a sound. But aren't we supposed to be in a soundproof boundary field? Why is there a sound? Ankara. Ankara? What does that mean? Ankara. Wow. He, he just like... Grabs her by the neck so easily. The shock passes through her as a shudder. Yes, a hand is originally used to grab, not to punch. Oh, he got bait. I guess she got baited by that. She thought it was a punch, but actually he was just going for the grab. It must be supported by Caster's magic as the enemy's finger uh, easily squeezed off her neck. Yeah, I was wondering. Okay, so I think it's confirmed that the reason why he's able to do all this, well, maybe it's because, I don't know. I, we didn't really learn about this before, but like, I guess he just knows martial arts. Uh, but other than that, the fact that he's able to block the sword in the first place and do all this damage, it's probably because uh, Caster, I think before mentioned before, put some strengthening magic in his body. And that's why he does so much damage, right? Is he able to uh, hold Saber up like this in the first place. You know, unlike Shiro, who puts magical energy into like an object uh, and, and into a weapon, you know, Soichiro Kuzuki himself is a weapon. Saber's sword is raised. Her sword moves to cut off the enemy's arm before her neck is crushed. But she is unable to finish her attack. Before the sword is swung, her body itself is swung like a sword. She feels her body fly through the air. An overswing like a pitcher. Like a pitcher. The man holds on to Saber's neck and he throws her with one arm. A fastball with a human as the ball. 
Ouch. There's no way she can land safely from it. Her neck is scraped off as she smashed into a concrete wall at a speed of 200 kilometers per hour. Exactly that fast, apparently. You know, as it turns out, we might have needed backup from Archer, Ren. Hmm. Her body is forced to stop its action. I guess they thought they were only gonna fight the caster, but no one expected Mr. Sensei here to be busting out moves like that. Apparently. Everyone watches it in astonishment. Uh.